Queen Amelia, the wife of King Otto, the first king of Greece at that time. New Corinth is a very important seaport by the Corinthian Gulf too. So ladies and gentlemen, if you look to the right, you will see New Corinth, modern Corinth. In a minute, in the middle, in the middle of the town, there is a big church with the dome at the top, with the cross on the top of the bell tower. This is the Cathedral of New Corinth dedicated to Apostle Paul, St. Paul. Here it is, can you see the bell tower? To the right, that's the cathedral of Corinth I was talking about. The valley around the dry Rocky Mountain, Acro Corinth Mountain, was inhabited 6,000 years before Christ. So it means this valley has a very long history of 8,000 years of continuous inhabitation. So in excavations in this valley, Prehistoric, Neolithic, settlements, tools, vases, weapons were found by archaeologists in excavations. Gradually, ancient Corinth was built straight ahead of us at the foot of the mountain, nearby both the Aegean and the Ionian Sea. And uh, Corinth was located at a very strategic spot because if you travel from the Greek mainland to the Peloponnese by land, or if you travel from the Aegean to the Ionian Sea by boat, then you have to travel through the area that belonged to Corinth. In ancient times, there was not the Corinth Canal. The Corinth Canal was built in modern times at the end of the 19th century. But the Corinthians, in very early times, before the birth of Christ, started thinking of how they could make the trip shorter and safer from the Aegean to the Ionian Sea or the other way around. The Corinthians had noticed that the Ionian Sea was slightly on a higher level compared to the Aegean Sea to the east. So the Corinthians were very much afraid that if they started building the Corinth Canal, the Ionian Sea being on a higher level would flood the valley of Corinth, would destroy Corinth, and also the Ionian Sea would uh, really make the islands across on the other side in the Aegean Sea sink below the level of the sea. So being afraid that something like that might happen, they never tried to build the Corinth Canal in the period before the birth of Christ. But instead, the Corinthians came up with a very bright idea. Instead of building the Corinth Canal, they built a road, Diolkos, D-I-O-L-C-O-S. The same place where nowadays the Corinth Canal was built, it was the same place, the same spot, where 600 years before Christ, the Corinthians built the road, the Olcos. That road was four miles long, paved with slabs of limestone. Right in the middle of the road, there were two furrows cut, two depressions cut. So when the boat came into the first seaport of Corinth, let's say to the one on the Aegean Sea, the boat was unloaded of its cargo, placed on a wheel platform, and being on that wheel platform, it was pushed and pulled by sailors and by slaves 
and this is how it was transported on that road, over the land, over the isthmus of Corinth, from one sea to the other. Uh, Corinth is very famous all over the world because of its biblical association with Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul visited Greece in the middle of the first century after Christ, during his second missionary journey. He started his trip from... Uh, Corinth is very famous all over the world because of its biblical association with Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul visited Greece in the middle of the first century after Christ, during his second missionary journey. He started his trip from... from 6,000 years before Christ till 2,000 years before Christ. And at that time, vases were handmade. When they use the term handmade, I mean they did not use the pottery wheel to shape it. But using their hands, they used to shape the vases. Therefore, vases were rather small in size. But uh, they knew when they were comfortable in the kiln, so they became waterproof. And in them, they could be water, wine, milk, or oil, whatever they were eating for the everyday needs. They were using all the time to control the mass. They were using all the time to control the mass. They were using all the time to control the mass. They were using all the time to control the mass. Look at these vases and you understand why we call them geometric vases, geometric stuff. Because vases at that time, they were decorated with geometric motifs. You know the word geometry, yeah? Geometric motifs. Lines, circles, semicircles, and so on and so forth. This is the most typical Greek motif, right here between the handles of the vase. This is what you call Greek key motif. Like the key to open the door, Greek key motif. This is how you call it. But
Ma che bello, che bello. Sì, 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 sì. Viene anche il mare, non c'è più due. Sì, sì, sì. Diciamo si nota. in the family that they are actually running this workshop as a third generation of ours. Wow. Okay, family. So, we are a family of painters as I said before and uh, we do this job for three generations now. At this time now I'm working on a Corinthian vase and I'm making the patina. Patina we call the dots we put on the vase with this sponge to make it look like age, like antique of course. We produce four different styles of ceramics. The Corinthian piano from the 6th century BC the Athenian one with the human around God, goddess, soldiers, etc., of the 5th century BC, the geometric Athenian that are earlier produced from the 10th century till 7th BC with the tiny geometric designs on, and finally the fourth and last model are the Santorini type one with the dolphins in blue purple red colors of the 15th century BC. That's the oldest type. Now, as we are four people in my family, my father is the potter. And the rest of us, my sister, my wife, and me, we are the painters. So, my father, he's buying the clay wet, of course, in this uh, condition, brown color. He uses a wheel to turn around with electricity now. This is an old one he used it a long time ago with the beads. And while he puts the clay on the wheel, with the, he presses his hands and he grows up the pot. The regular way. Till this measurement here, 50 centimeters, all the pots are made by himself in one piece, except the handles. Have the separate produced and stick it on the base. You can imagine that taller pots like this here are made all in parts. One here, second here, third the neck, fourth the top, fifth the handles. You stick the pieces together, he enter more stuff into the kilom, he fill the kilom with the pots, a small, big size, whatever, and then he, he close the kilom for one hour in 930 Celsius, so that the clay then comes like that, standable and light brown. The beast with color. Next day, he brings the pots here into this place while the rest of us will start the painting. So, the beginning. We add the paint on the hand turned wheel, like this here, and with the other hand, we start and we do the lines over. Lines like here. Thick one, you see, or thin one. Depends how the original base is being produced. And then, we start the drawing of the designs, like my wife, she has that drawing here with a pencil. Now, the question is, why we use pencil for the drawing? This is just because the whole work is free. We don't use rice paper, stamps, stamps, stuff like that. So we do mistakes. Don't forget that what we do. We get the designs from the pictures, you see, and we do the copy like this here. Mm. This is the original from the Museum in London, and that's the copy that we've done. So the pencil can be erased. The colors, not. That's why we use pencil. So after we're satisfied with the drawing, then we put the colors, we paint the colors over the pencil, and if the background like this here, it's black, you see? We use needles and we scratch the clay over, so we do the details over the black. In case now that the background foam is not black, dark, but a lighter color, like this orange one, for instance, you see, the details are painted, not with a needle done. After we do the whole paint then, and the scratching, if it's necessary or not, then we do the patina, like I'm doing now here. And then we varnish the pots. Not the gain oven, because second time on the oven, make the base in glaze, like that here. So what we do is that we use a matte varnish, like the one they use for the wooden furniture, and we do it with a matte varnish. After that, we complete the quantity of products. 
that we have here now to finish, you see here, we do a phone call to the museum authorities, an inspector come here, and after you can see that our piece looks similar to the museum, like this one here too, that is a museum in Berlin, in Germany, this time, it was a perfume oil vessel, especially that piece, then they put a seal that says museum copy. Now, with this seal, we are free to sell, to export, to ship, to do whatever we want without problems. But I want your attention, I'm unfinished. Seals you find on a vase like this here too. But this seal, it doesn't say museum copy on. It says only handmade in Greece. This one, this seal, is given by the state authorities to authorize that this piece is made in Greece and not in China. It's also but, handmade, handpainted. Yeah, but look what you see on it, it's not exact copy. It is his imagination, eh? Uh, the so it. now the question is, what's the difference between the copies and the imagination? Huge differences. First of all, the time we need for this. Four hours spent. This is less than 40 minutes. Second, the charge. We charge 28 euro for this, 10 for this. And third, that's a piece of art that is in New Zealand in Athens. And this is just a nice imagination coming out from our mind. So that's the difference between the two bases here. Except the before price type base that we produce, the last three years, we've done only those two oilums that are from the Christian time, from the St. Paul period. The one with the cross and the one with the fish. Both are in our museum here. And that they used to, uh, they used for light in the old time, as you know. Signed by us and made by us. Those are the only pieces we have from the St. Paul. All the rest of the days you see in that section, that it's our collection, are BC. On the other side, there is a variety of items like statues, like porcelain, onyx, etc., that made all in Greece, but not by us. We are specialists in ceramics. Thank you for your time. Any, any question about the pottery? Don't hesitate to ask me. I'll be glad to explain to you. Thank you. Where do the icons come from?